a demonstration earthship in Glasgow with their lottery money. This is the public. This is the people choosing to do this. Uh, you know, because earthships are, are getting well known in Europe and the websites out there and whatever. And so the people made the choice to take their lottery money and build a carbon zero demonstration pavilion. And it took them two and a half years to get a permit. You know, like that's, that's insane. That's what, so that to me, now that, you know, this part is the fun part. We're, get, we're getting it better all the time. It works good now. It's ready to roll. And where we're at now is uh, getting it so that people can do it. Uh, two and a half years for a permit. We, it took us three years to get one in Brighton, England. Uh, I had a guy work for 18 months. He was, hell, he came to me. Uh, he was, had an oxygen tank on his back. I thought he was going to die in the next week. And uh, he worked for 18 months to get a permit in Arizona, Pima County, Arizona, to get uh, his earthship built. And it's going up now. It's on the, on the web. Uh, and uh, so it's like in a, a lot of developed countries and cities, uh, it's, it is difficult still. Uh, the further you get out in the boonies, the easier it is. And so what we find ourselves is, you know, we try to support people and work with them and, uh, and help them through the permit process and everything. And, uh, but, you know, as the thing, as the climate, as the planet situation gets, continues to worsen, so to speak, uh, we're seeing that uh, these places that allow you to do like third world countries. Third world countries are the Indian reservations, like we did one up in uh, Lakota Sioux land, uh, and they just took us out there on uh, Chief Crazy Horse's ancestors, uh, I mean, uh, descendants land, and uh, said, do it here. You know, that was, that was the permit. Uh, the, uh, and so they, they have land, now they have a lot of money from gambling, and they got no rules. They could take the lead. Third world countries can take the lead because they aren't encumbered by all these rules and regulations. And in this country, we're taking a, a map, uh, you know, of the U.S., whatever it's shaped like, uh, yeah. and uh, we're find we're going to map it online because there, there's these places we call pockets of freedom, like Montana. <laughs> I mean, it's actually you know this is supposed to be a free country. Well, let me tell you about it. But uh, there are places like. That we, we've just noticed this recently, but people have, you know, we've got people, we're selling drawings all over the world and then hacking through the permit process with them and sending off engineer reports and tests and studies and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, which takes, a, which it, it slows down the process of getting carbon zero building out there. And it's, it's not, I can't really find whose fault it is. It's just the human condition has woven a set of rules around itself in the developed world to the point where they can't evolve without uh, taking a tremendous amount of effort and time and we don't have that. So it's, a, it's an extreme contrast to have somebody walk in our office and a month later we're building a building for them in Montana. And that's happening, it happened uh, twice in Montana, now it's happening in Texas. So what we're going to do is map the counties in every state because this county that we did this building for in Miles City, they don't have, they don't, you don't need any permits. In, uh, in, um, in Montana, is, is the Governor Schweitzer, does he know what you guys are doing? Uh, he's, he's, he's I'm not right. sure. We're, we're, as a result of our build there, they're, at, they're wanting us to tell them about the, uh, our gray water system and things like that. But I, I, I imagine it, everywhere we go it gets in the paper, so I imagine they're aware of it. We're not sure of whether we're going to do harm or good by pointing this out, but you take Montana and Idaho and the Dakotas and, and you start coloring in all these counties where you don't need permits. And now in Texas, we're in East Texas, no permit needed. In other words, the guy came in on East Texas. He came in to corner, stayed in Corner Cottage a few weeks ago. We're going down there in three weeks to throw up a building for him. No permit needed. So what I'm saying is green carbon zero housing can boom, exist instantly in lots of places around the U.S. And then, uh, you know, this is almost like the maps they make of the Democrats and the Republicans. You got the map of where you're free to take care of yourself 
and where you're not free. And it could be that uh, a lot of people end up moving because uh, it's beautiful land. See, there's some of the most beautiful land in the country is what they say worthless because it has no utilities. And uh, it's also worthless because it's, you know, doesn't have any rules and regulations. So there's a lot of that in this country. There's a whole lot of it in the rest of the world. Europe is more, is one of the worst for not having it, but there are pockets in Europe too. So there are, there are places where what we're saying now is, yes, we're still, we're still working on the codes and regulations and trying to go through the regular path, which is more time consuming and so on. But uh, at the same time, we are uh, uh, going for these pockets of freedom. We have sort of got one here because of two decades of fighting. I'm just curious, has your fight gotten any easier now that you've found these pockets where you've built them and proven that it can be successful? Are there other areas that have been fighting you that are becoming a little easier to get this done? Well, there's no question that with the media uh, now, now there it used to be global warming was kind of a freaky thing you didn't talk about, and now it's, it's everywhere. You know, every time you turn on the television, there's something about climate change and everything. So it is getting easier. People are at least listening and looking at it, but they always come back to the same thing. It's a, it's a government employee, has a rule book. He'll lose his job if you don't enforce the rule book. I mean, I've even had him apologize to me for having to enforce it. But it's like... So what we have, we, I don't know how many people have seen the movie, we introduced this law and fought through it for four years, and so I illustrated to myself, yeah, you can make new law and change things, but we don't have four years. You know, we need to do this every week, every month. And uh, so we have now evolved the law into what, uh, uh, what, we're, what we're calling, what is known, it's, a, it's an executive order. An executive order is, uh, is a tool that any governor or president has to, and we wrote one for the governor of Arizona and uh, we're, for the governor of New Mexico, who is now you know, on board with us, so to speak. Uh, we wrote an executive order that it, basically the bottom line with it is it's like, it's the way they did the atomic bomb. You know, after Pearl Harbor, they, they, uh, they, they, everybody was scared enough that Within weeks, they were out here in Los Alamos building a city, building and testing a bomb, uh, blowing apart 10,000 acres, you know. Uh, they, they broke the rules because they were scared. Uh, we're waiting for them to get scared enough, but uh, the executive order is what allows a, a government to do that. And so we're writing an executive order that mandates... Uh, uh, carbon zero permitting, if you're going to build a home that's, that you're claiming is carbon zero and you, you, your proof of that is that you're not hooking up to any utilities, if you're going to build a carbon zero home, uh, then you get a red carpeted permit in, in days. In other words, it red carpets carbon zero permitting. Right now, if you're a developer and you're going to build a, a set of condos, if you're going to build the, two, the typical junk condos that hook up to all the grids, uh, you're going to get moved through pretty quick uh, if you can do some expensive water system and sewage treatment plant and whatever, all of which are half-assed. Uh, but if you're going to do a green condo, carbon zero condo development, there's going to be definitely such, so much new or unheard of technology that you're going to be on the permit level for two or three years. Yeah, because so the the, the uh, there is the issue right there. It's too it's very easy still to do the wrong thing. It's too hard to do the right thing. We're trying to get an executive order executive order to make it easier to do the right thing or the the, the logical thing, as I would say, uh, in terms of trying to move people uh, toward carbon zero development rather than more of the same. And so that's the. The technology, this is what I'm going after everywhere. We, the governor of the Galapagos Islands has asked us to go down there. I'm going there in three weeks or two weeks or something. They have made a claim to the world that they're going to be carbon zero by 2015, and then he turned around and observed the fact that he didn't know how to go about it.
<laughs> so, so he goes online and finds these idiots out in New Mexico, yeah. Have you looked into carbon credits at all as an incentive for this? Well, uh, I haven't, but my son has carbon, carbon uh, credits is going to be a, a form of currency sort of in the future. What they're saying, I don't quite understand it, but they're saying that, that a company that's doing a bunch of bad stuff could donate money to us and get carbon credits. Uh, I'll take it, you know. Uh, yeah, so in, in a way that's weird, but it's like, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, carbon credits is starting to be, you know, uh, we're starting, I, I would say, if you know how to do the formulas and the application of carbon credits to an earthship, my guess is it's going to come out with a negative carbon footprint. So I sit on my um, Community Health Improvement Council from Farmington yep. as a nurse, and one of our priorities for a long time has been affordable housing. So when we had our last meeting, so again, a big talk about the affordable housing, you know, going from homeless to actually being a homeowner and kind of all the things that we have in our community along that way, they were talking about getting people to be able to afford their first house. So I piped up and I mentioned, you know, are we building houses that are worth buying? You know, and I said, you know, we can build off the grid, no utilities. I mean, you know, if, if it's possible. I was just wondering if you've had any experience working with, like, Habitat for Humanity or any of these groups that are trying to, that are out there building houses right now, you know, not for people that are upper middle class who can afford, you know, pottery barns and earth shifts, but, you know. Well, we, uh, we've been approached by Habitat for Humanity several times, but it's never... They're, they're building, you know, they have kind of a good thing of building houses, but the house, I've heard that uh, through, through talking to them and, and having meetings with them that a lot of the, the buildings that they build go up, but then they have, you know, just the same utility bill as anybody else, and they can't, that when they get a home for an impoverished family, they can't afford to operate it, you know, they can't, and with rising, I mean, gas here, propane has quadrupled in the last few years. Uh, so when you have to heat and cool a building and provide electricity for it and pay a water bill and pay a sewage bill, even though it's given, the home is given to you, you can't afford to use it. So we haven't, nothing's materialized with them. We're, we're still kind of on the periphery of reality, I think, on, on many counts, and maybe we'll end up staying there because I think reality is going to crumble anyway. So uh, no, we haven't gotten involved uh, with any groups like that although there has been talk. Uh, but, so, they, so they, the issue then is uh, for, for where to go from here is, yeah, at this seminar today and tomorrow and this afternoon, you're going to pick up the, the, the crux of uh, how to uh, understand these things and a little bit on how to build them. Uh, but, there is a whole other issue, then, and we can, uh, depending on where people are located, if you haven't gotten land yet, see, what I would say is a lot of people are, uh, that come to these seminars are looking for the uh, place to do it. And uh, so what I would say is, it is, you would be miles ahead if you just, if you haven't got your land yet, to check around for the areas in your state or the area where you want to live, and, uh, and see if you can find a pocket of freedom to do this as opposed to a place where you're going to have to fight for a year or bastardize the design or whatever. They'll ultimately, you know, they will come around. Uh, and I can say that from experience because, you know, eight years ago they were practically putting me in jail, stripping me of my license and everything else. And now the governor is... Gave, has given us 300 grand to do this building next door to demonstrate this. They're talking about giving us another 400 grand to add an addition on it where people can stay in it. It's called the C Project, uh, Sustainable Energy Experience. And uh, now the town of Taos, on the other side, the state has given them uh, the town of Taos uh, land. And they want to do a visitor center. And they came to us and asked us to do the visitor center. So they, they have come around. I mean, we could easily screw it up uh, and be right back where we started. But you had a question? Um, what other areas would you say are pockets of freedom? Well, the, we're, we have just kind of come across this concept or this observation. For sure, uh, 
lots of Montana, but not not exactly near Billings or Bozeman or anything like that, but just but not that far out. Lots of Montana, Dakotas, Idaho, even Washington State, Canada, uh, then some of the the backwood states, te East Texas, uh, Louisiana, Arkansas, uh, even Kentucky. I mean, every state, you know, just go as far away from where, what we got is people on the staff now, we're starting this, taking every state, county by county, calling the county seat and asking, what do you require for a permit? Because we just, it blew our minds to have somebody walk in here and a month later we're building a house for them. I mean, it just, you know, the, the house is already designed. We tailored the design to their climate. And if they have the funding, then they, uh, you know, we're, it's like, it's amazing to see that green carbon zero building can happen like that. And, and it really emphasizes all these fights that we've been through over the last few decades that the, the technology is here. I say it over and over again. The technology is here and getting better all the time. The thing standing in the way is the approvals to allow you to do it, and it's like, it's insane, but it's really, who, who are you gonna, whose fault is it? I don't know. The, the, all the codes and regulations came about from, uh, they, the big phrase they like to use is the health, safety, and welfare of the people. And so, <laughs> so they're, they're making them real safe for the next week, but in, an, in the next year, they're going to all die anyway. So, yeah. Dolores County, Colorado. You have an earthship in Rico, which is up near Telluride. Yeah. And we've just started some projects up there. There's uh, no building permits required. You're just a septic and a gravel machine. Yeah, and so that's, see, that's fantastic. And septic is no problem, because I'll go into the, I may even get into it a little bit today. I'll go into the, uh, to the uh, septic sewage system, we have inherently in the building uh, a conventional septic system. That's one of the ways we have learned to do it is like, see, I, like I say, I've gone through all of the different levels of how to do this from fighting to whatever. Uh, fighting takes too much energy. You know, I just tell them what they want to hear now. And, and, you know, you want this? You got it. You know what I mean? It's like, and, and half of them, Half of the officials even know that that's what I'm doing, but it makes them safe because they know that what's in their rule book is, is wrong. I mean, I've had health officials in Colorado ask me for a job. Uh, so, they, so we have inherently a conventional septic system. The way I, uh, we use it as part of our uh, unconventional system. The way I uh, see it in my head is like uh, when you got a dog and it's got worms, and you got a worm pill you have to give it, you put the worm pill in a ball of hamburger and the dog just yeah. whoops it down. So that's the way I deal with the regulation people, you know. Uh, I put it in a ball of hamburger and they whoop it down. And it works. But still, there's, you know, the, the, there's still the process and everything. So it's like we're headed, we're aiming for projects that, I mean, I'm like, uh, I'm not trying to be a, a doomsday person or anything, but... Uh, you know, for us to spend our time fighting the bureaucrats as opposed to spending our time building an earthship, it's way more important for us to build an earthship out in the boonies because the web, you know, out, we were out in the boonies in Miles City, Montana, but Jonah, my son, puts it on the web. People see it going up. They see a carbon zero building going up, going up quick, and the world sees it. And of course, that causes, you know, I think while we were in Miles City is when the governor of the Galapagos uh, asked us to come down there. And, uh, or maybe it was, I was, I don't know, maybe it was while I was in Australia. It was just in Australia, the same thing's going on there. The, they need it desperately. They need all of these things desperately. Uh, but they're just, they, they, they get it to the certain point of recognizing they need it, and then they're hitting their brick wall of their own codes and regulations and rules. And so we're looking at trying to find pockets of freedom there. And the other thing with Australia is just like it is in this country, the place that's gonna get to do it quickest is the Maori.